107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. This brother, once again, will be lighting up the uh, the silver screen. And, you know, for those of you watching us on uh, Facebook Live on The Quiet Storm with Lenny Green on Facebook, um, you know, you shared a pretty interesting story. Thank you. But you have a pretty interesting life when you come to You said you didn't really get started into acting until you were... 30. 30. Yep. Which yep. is... Some might say it's too old, but yeah. who who can determine that? No one really can determine that because they have all kind of types of actors. I mean, I could speak for myself, and I'll tell you that had I started much earlier, like a lot of the people that I know, it would have destroyed me. It would have destroyed me because of my need for, at the time, my need for external approval and you know outside approval. And um, when you don't have that clear sense of self and that independent way of existing, Hollywood can truly steer you in some crazy directions. So do you think um, when we're in our 20s, we're, we're still shaping and, and, and going through that morph period of getting to know who we are and getting to know our values, the, the value of everything around you know, us? It depends. It really depends. So, you know, some people grow up in, 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 a, in a household or, or with the types of parents that are able to, you know, bring on tradition and help them understand and appreciate where they are and why they are where they are. You get that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that my parents were young and at times I felt like the chaperone of my parents. And so I had a lot of unanswered questions in my heart. I, I had a lot of, you know, my mom, my mom up and disappeared like when I was 12. You know what I mean? So all of these things had played a role into me having to deal with certain issues and finding ways to resolve them. And I think it just took me longer, you know? Hmm. Yeah. Well, look, no regret to you um, no. because things are... Things are blossoming for you in a tremendous way these days. Oh man, it's beautiful, and I can't say that without saying that you know my mom is my best friend, which is which is the other side of it, which is you know right. I had you know spent the last twenty years really building a great relationship with my mom. That's great, and that has given me a a, a current piece that helps me do what I do, you man. know, be, knowing that I have that my true love is coming from legitimate sources, yeah. you know? Yeah, I love it, I love it. Ramani, he uh, had this moment um, when you were a teenager. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, look, you had a hit, you had a hit. I had a hit. College boys had a hit. Yeah, I was, I was a little, little older than a teenager, actually. I, I think I was in my early 20s, yeah, I had a hit. It's called Victim of the Ghetto, it was a number one, it was the number one rap single in the country. Can't hey. get any bigger than that, right? That's right, you There know? you go. And then after that hit, you went right into the Marines. Um, no, actually, I went to the Marines before that. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I left high school and went straight to the Marines. Honorable the Marines, discharge? Um, you know, it's true, yeah, they did. The uh, Marine Corps helped me go to uh, California to pursue my record career. Interesting. Yeah. What? Yeah, we were stationed in Houston, and they were like, "All right, we have a we have a base that we share with the Air Force right behind Stadium Way. You know, you know where Dodger Stadium is. Yeah. They they stationed me over there so that I could pursue my my record deal. How lovely was that? People don't know, man. It is lovely. It's really lovely. If you were to have children, yeah. would you encourage them to go into the service? Um, you know, as I've gotten older. <laughs> and wiser. And wiser, and I understand who, in fact, mobilizes our military. I'm trying to keep it quiet storm here, so bear with me. I don't want to say too much. I see. But now that I understand who, in fact, mobilizes our uh, military, the idea of my children being, children having children of my own and them going into the military scares me. Yeah. But there is a lot um, to be said about the discipline that's learned and earned just throughout the boot camp process. I think I would like to experience that just from a physical yeah. uh, standpoint. Um, and you you have carried, I, I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, this brother has carried one of, the, uh, <laughs> one of the most critical and most important things of life, being on time. I this, do believe this brother being arrived on time. On time. The, <laughs> the door opened up, they're like, wait, you, you're here now? <laughs> no, I got lucky, they were like, you better get out of here. You better get out of here right now. No, um, for the, you know what, honestly, I try my best. And I will tell you that um, normally, like back when we had to audition and stuff like that, yeah. it was important for me to be there 15 minutes early. And you guys, in movies, I mean, yeah. you know, you're a big star, so in movies, the call is early, right? Oh, 4.45 a.m., you gotta be on set, you gotta be, 4.45 a.m., you gotta be in a makeup chair. So what time do you actually get rest the night before? I've always wanted to know that. Like the I, night before, I, I, I know sometimes, yeah, explain that to you me. You don't sorry. get rest. A lot of times you really don't get rest, you know, because we sometimes work 17, 18 hour days. I've even worked like longer than that. You just do, and if, if you're lucky, you have a 12 to 14 hour day, 
and you have that much time to go home, get your things together, handle whatever's been neglected, and get to sleep and get back up. So where do you where do you um, cram for studying and knowing your lines before way before the set comes? That's I guess that's why it takes a year to come out with these uh, flicks. Sometimes right? you don't even get your script until you get on set. Think like a man too. We didn't get our script until we were on set. So the cramming. I actually had to hire uh, another person to pretty much follow me around while I was taking care of things, my personal stuff, and run lines with me. So it depends on the director, I'm assuming, um, of how stringent they want you to remember line for line, or is it kind of, a, you get the gist of it and you just kind of free fall? It, 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 it depends on the director. Um, you know, I, I've, done, I've done, I've been in movies where we did like full-blown rehearsals of scenes which really helped. When you were in Vegas, Las Vegas, um, with oh, Robert De Niro. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good example of me having plenty of time to prepare. And not necessarily, you don't, listen, the greats don't really, they are not going to be rehearsing with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I can't see Robert De Niro being like, Romney, you, you got some time to rehearse on, you know, or Morgan <laughs> Freeman being like. But what I was going to say is that it's a muscle that you develop. Yeah. And for most of us, we can look at something one or two times and get it. We should tell everyone once again that Romney Malco is in this hot new upcoming flick, Almost Christmas. It's hilarious. You've been seeing the the, the little snips on, on TV already. So they're getting you prepared for November 11th. That's when it's going to be in theaters. And, uh, I trust that you had a wonderful time, despite of you playing a politician in this flick. Yeah. <laughs> you had a wonderful, you can't, there couldn't have been a day that went by that you didn't laugh, laugh at least 15 times. No, um, you know, it's one of those sets where like Monique <clears throat> really was auntie, you know what I mean? She and put everybody in check sometimes. She put everybody in check and Danny Glover really was pops. You know, I was the adopted child in the family. Really? Like for real. I like running a close second with DC Youngfly and, <laughs> um, and we really did, it, it's one of the things that made movies like Think Like a Man such a, a great experience and what makes almost Christmas such a great experience is that the camaraderie, you know, we were such a collaborative set, such easy and grateful people, changes everything. And that's the most important thing, man, most important. And Yeah, and, and it transcends, you look at the movie and you see it. You see people having fun, but you see people really connecting with the material. That's what's up. Robert E. Malco is his name. You've seen him in 40-Year-Old Virgin. You've seen him in uh, Weeds. You've seen him in uh, uh, The Pest. Oh, no, I wasn't in The Pest. Yeah, okay. I did the music. You... Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, what about the um, VH1 Telepic? Oh, the <laughs> MC Hammer story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did play Hammer. Ah. Uh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's a good blast from the past. I like that we going back like that. Well, I mean, look... It, it, I just want to show the depth of where you came from right. to where you are now. It's important. It really is important, and uh, this film is going to be phenomenal. And what are some of your upcoming projects after uh, Almost Christmas, which comes out in a couple of weeks? Well, I'm so glad you gave me an opportunity to talk about it. Um, my thing I am probably most passionate about is a character that I created uh, named Tijuana Jackson. Oh, your alter ego. My alter ego. Oh, you know about it. Okay. Prison Logic. He built this cult following. Ended up doing <laughs> stuff for HBO. You know everybody. Russell Simmons. Name every everybody. And and so, um, I did a crowdfunding campaign. I put together a crowdfunding campaign and raised all this money mm -hmm. to go make this movie. And I'm in the process of going and making that movie. If you want to check it out, you too can get involved. Um, it's at PrisonLogic.com, and it's just about an ex-convict who gets out of jail and is set on becoming a world-renowned life coach. <laughs> that's his life. That, that, that's his story. And I, it's funny. I use comedy to do this. Did I cut you off, brother? No, no, no. All right. I use comedy to do this, but I, it's, it's a way for me to, 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 to share my life experiences yeah. and, and help bring some reasoning about, help people understand the importance of forgiveness, the importance of community, and also understand how the prison industrial complex has pretty much set up to disenfranchise you, not just from, not from being a, you know, a, a, a citizen of society, but also from being a member of your family. Yeah. You know? And I just have this gift of being able to tell the most horrific stories and make you laugh at the same time. You're gifted. Thank you. <laughs> You're gifted, man. You're gifted. And, you. and you, know, you didn't need me to tell you that because you, know, you have a... Uh, a wonderful blossoming career, man. I mean, Thank a lot you. of stuff that we've seen you in. If we have to go back to the forty-year-old virgin, right. that Thank was you. some funny stuff right there, man. Thank so you. you're gifted, brother, and I, I'm yeah. I'm very very proud of you for all the success that you have uh, ascertained so far. And I know this is still only the beginning. Thank you. We'll see you on film when you're 89. All right, all right. <laughs> well, I'm, you know I'm hoping so. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm so picky is because yeah. I really do believe that quality matters and quality. I think my best 
uh, representation. You can have the biggest agent, the biggest manager. My best representation is my body of work. That's what I, I want to yeah. believe. Well, you got a great body of work. Thank you. Yeah, and, and congratulations to you as well, understanding Thank where you come from and where you've been, Thank and you, how you got to where you are, top of the food chain. <laughs> That's what this is. I'm trying to wear a hat. in New York City, hey. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, very, it, it's, it's very inspiring. Well, thank you, brother. You're welcome. God, God bless you and your walk. Thank you. Thank you for coming back and visiting me. Come on back anytime you're in the area. I'm looking you know forward what I'm saying? to it. We'd we'll love to have you, always. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Romney Malco, baby. Don't forget, almost Christmas, November 11th. You don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss it at all.